All right, everyone, buckle up, because today we are diving headfirst into a topic that never gets old, UAPs and UFOs. A topic that just never gets old. It just doesn't. We're taking a deep dive into this captivating world with this awesome book, Unveiling the Mystery, a comprehensive guide to understanding UAPs and UFOs. Catchy title. Right. We're going to unpack the really juicy stuff from it, the most interesting findings, the head-scratching incidents, and basically cut through all the noise to give you the clearest picture possible. Because there's a lot of noise out there. A lot. So we're going to separate fact from fiction, look at some compelling arguments, and hopefully give you some new perspectives on this always hot topic. Exactly. And it's more than just, you know, are we alone? It really makes you think about humanity's place in the grand scheme of things. 100%. Okay, so let's start right at the beginning. The book kicks off by addressing something that I think trips a lot of people up, the difference between UFOs and UAPs. What's the deal with that? Yeah, it's a good place to start. You know, the term UFO, let's be honest, it conjures up images of like mm -hmm. flying saucers and aliens, the right? Little green men. Exactly. It comes with a lot of baggage. So UAP, which stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, it's a more, let's say, neutral term. Mm -hmm. It just acknowledges that hey, there's something we're seeing, and we don't know what it is yet. It opens up the possibility with, without jumping to conclusions. Exactly. Now, the book dives into the history of all this, and it's wild to think that people have been spotting weird stuff in the skies for, well, basically forever, right? Oh, yeah. Chapter 3 delves into that. Did you know even the ancient Romans were documenting what they called flying shields? Flying shields? What did they think those were? I mean, can you imagine... <laughs> Trying to explain a weather balloon to a Roman centurion is like, no, no, it's just uh, filled with air. Right. It puts things in perspective. But, yeah, it shows this fascination, this, this kind of mystery in the sky is woven into our history. Totally. And as we move closer to modern times, things get even more interesting. I mean... The book brings up some big ones, like the USS Nimitz encounter back in 2004. We're talking about highly trained Navy pilots, their sensors picking up something totally unexplainable. I mean, that's some X-Files stuff right there. Oh, yeah. The Nimitz case is a classic. And what makes it even more intriguing is that it's not an isolated incident. There are other credible reports from pilots and military personnel, and you know, these are people who know their stuff when it comes to the sky. They're not just going to mistake a flock of birds for something extraordinary. Right, and that's actually a big part of why governments have started taking this seriously. If it were just you know, people misidentifying things, it wouldn't be getting this level of attention. Exactly. And speaking of governments, Chapter 6 goes deep into the history of how governments have been involved in UAP and UFO investigations, right from like Project Blue Book all the way to the recent UAP task force. Yeah. Project Blue Book alone, I mean, that was a huge undertaking. The U.S. Air Force spent years analyzing hundreds of sightings, and while they did explain a good chunk of them, there were still some that just they couldn't figure out. So are we saying some of those remain unsolved to this day? Like, the government knows something, but they're not telling. Well, we can't say for sure, yeah. right? But the fact that governments are still actively researching and, you know, even admitting they don't have all the answers, it definitely adds to the whole mystique. It definitely keeps us guessing. Okay, so we've talked about strange sightings, we've talked about government involvement, but now let's address the elephant in the room. What are the possible explanations for these UAPs? And be honest, does the book give any weight to the idea that some of these could be, you know, alien spacecraft? Chapter 7 tackles that head on. And while there's no definitive proof that UAPs are alien spacecraft, and the book makes that very clear, the possibility, however remote, is fascinating. Of course. It's hard not to at least entertain the idea. Totally. But what the book emphasizes is that the search for extraterrestrial life is constantly evolving. We're no longer limited to just looking for weird lights in the sky. Scientists are using incredibly advanced technology to analyze distant planets, searching for any signs of life. So even if these UAPs aren't alien spacecraft, the search itself could lead us to evidence of life elsewhere. Exactly. It's like putting together a giant puzzle. Every new piece of information, whether it's from a UAP sighting or a telescope peering into deep space, brings us a step closer to understanding our place in the universe. That's a great way to put it. And it makes you wonder, if we did find concrete evidence of extraterrestrial life, how would that change everything? I mean, not just scientifically, but our whole understanding of existence. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? The book touches on that, how such a discovery would have profound implications, not just for science, but for our society, religion, philosophy. It would be, well, there's no roadmap for that kind of paradigm shift. It's definitely something to ponder. 
Well, there you have it, folks. From ancient Roman sightings to modern day government investigations, we've covered a lot of ground today. If you're looking for a thought provoking deep dive into this captivating topic, Unveiling the Mystery, a comprehensive guide to understanding UAPs and UFOs is definitely worth checking out. I totally agree. I think it really captures the mystery, the wonder, and the sheer awe that this subject evokes. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies and your minds open to the possibilities. You never know what you might see.